You all know I've spent a lot of time on the Laura Owens case lately. And if you're not familiar with that case, she faked a pregnancy to the extent that she has created fake ultrasounds and allegedly worn a fake prosthetic to convince somebody she was pregnant. And even the court, she has tried to deceive the court. And it just, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that level of crazy, stupid things that could potentially ruin your life and get you in trouble. And I've seen a lot of stupid stuff watching the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of court videos I've watched over the past year working on this channel. And that's not counting the stuff we've seen on court cam. Ooh. Like the fights. Yeah, that's not going to go over well. Miss Hardwick, or just the total loss of control? I don't care. I haven't done anything to this court. You should care. I haven't done anything to him. She will be arrested for contempt of court. You will serve 10 days for contempt of court. Go now. Ouch. Ouch. I had to hurt. Neither of them and just feel like straight up around. stupid. Judge Buzzard springs into action. And it's on. They're handcuffs. Keep in mind the two escapees are in handcuffs and prison issue sandals. I love listening to Dan Abrams. Dude, face planted. A witness points the judge in the right direction. Not only is he As stupid, but he gets humiliated on, you know. I, this is the most watched moments. Stairwell. I think it had 47 million views. So, yeah. Not your brightest moment, man. Not your brightest moment. And now to the second. But then. One floor away from freedom. But Judge Buzzard they, is gaining some ground. Especially <laughs> on the one who lost his sandal. The judge catches the, judge the one guy. Is the lagging defendant just outside the exit to the building. Two deputies catch up moments later. But listen, they interview him afterwards. And bring him back to like, a cell. How bad. The, the other defendant's picked up just a few blocks <laughs> away. We're sitting there on the benches together and he's like, I'm going to run. I said, what am I doing? What did I just do? I got to go with it now. There's nothing. I can't stop right here. There's nothing I can do now. I'm, I'm screwed. I only get like four blocks and then I stop. Like I just stopped on my own. I'm like, what am I doing right now? It was just action. If only he had thought of that, like, I don't know, 30 seconds earlier. Imagine what he could have saved himself. And then this dude. As who he just pulls out what appears to be. Straight up lights up in court. No one seems to notice like, until. You know. Okay. <laughs> Those are pretty good. I haven't quite seen that level, but you know, that's law and crime. They have access to a much wider selection than, you know, little old me. But this past week, several things have come across to my monitor that have been quite head scratching. Some of them have been sent in by you all, which I greatly appreciate. And some of them I just randomly stumbled across. So let me show you some of the head scratching moments that I've seen where I go, WTF, were you thinking? Why would you think that this is okay to do? Why? What? Seriously? Oh. I wanted her at that location and nowhere else. She defied the court's order decided to appear on her own Zoom in her homegirl's car or whatever. And Medical marijuana is a great thing for some people. Not me. I end up like paranoid. Like, yeah. It's helped chronic pain sufferers, people with mental health problems. So many different things can be eased or even cured with it. But the thing is, having a card is not a 
free for all to be stoned 24 seven. You still have responsibilities in life that require you to be clear headed and alert. And if you're not able to do that, like you need to be stoned all the time, then you need a guardian or a caretaker to make those decisions for you. Like there, somebody has to make those decisions in your life. And apparently that's not really understood because this doofus shows up in Judge Simpson's court. He's a kite waving his card around thinking it's his get out of jail free ticket. Wrong. Where? State your name, please. Yeah. Bobby Beach. Jenna, we're requesting an adjournment. Mr. Beach, I'm providing Mr. Beach a copy with Discovery today. Um, he wants to review it all before next. Before I adjourn it, Mr. Beach, you had any controlled substance today? Oh, um, no. Mr. Allen. No. You've had nothing. So if I give you a test, You'll come back clean. Um, well, this card right here tells me at the community corrections that I can smoke marijuana and I pay money for it. State of Michigan. Say right here, regulatory cannabis. I pay money, taxes. I should be able to medicate. I just had lower back surgery two years ago, St. Joe Hospital. They say either use prescription drugs or use what the state of Michigan provides you, the taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would that be the only thing that would show up in your system? That's it, Yana. I know. I'm going to pass the matter. I'm going to let him go on his own. Take a test. Come back, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. Despite your ability to use marijuana on that card, you can't be under the influence when you come into court. Do you understand that? Yeah, I'm not. No, I just woke up. I'm not. No. Oh, you just woke up? Yeah, That's why girl. you didn't know where to go in the courtroom? Yeah, I just have a yeah, daughter. Okay. No, I got you. I've been babysitting okay. for this yeah. I just Okay, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm going to trust you to go over on your own. Let's see what the test is. I'm not smoking come, coming on court, young. Really? Yeah. I'm okay. Not, all right. I'm very okay. Coherent. Okay. I'm all right. Good. Then you probably ought to stop talking and go take your test. All right. All right. Yeah, that way. You better, yeah, get an order over to him. Just a one time. Uh, Mr. Feaster, tell Miss Perrini you better point the way because he's going to get lost. <laughs> One time, yeah, just one time urine. I guess showing up in court high is a little better than showing up in court so drunk that you're on the verge of passing out on your couch. Um, this one's kind of old, but it's still one of my favorites. Like, WTF, were you thinking? Okay, Mr. Byfield, you're gonna sit up, you're in court. Yeah, okay, I will. Oh. I, lost my, I, lost, I lost my phone. Okay. That's and, fine. Just okay. just make sure that you act like you're in court and we'll get started, okay? okay. That's that's fine. Uh, all right. On the record, State of Michigan versus Deshaun Fifield 2201621FD. And you, sir, you are Deshaun Fifield, is that right? Correct. All right. Mr. Fifield, you're here for probation violation arraignment. So I have to tell you, if you have violated the probation since you're on probation for an OWI third offense. Worst case scenario is termination from specialty court and uh, sentenced to up to five years in prison. You have the right to have an attorney in this matter. If you cannot afford one, we can see if the public defender will represent you. You have the right to have a hearing where it must be proven by a preponderance of the evidence that you violated the terms of your probation. I have two show causes here with some violations. Uh, the first one says a uh, violation, technical violation, failure to provide a sample at Aver Health on September 21st. Uh, technical violation, failure to submit to a Silverlink test on September 30. Technical violation, failure to submit to Silverlink test October 1st. Non-technical violation, test deposit for alcohol on Silverlink September 30 uh, at a 0.116.
non-technical violation tested positive for alcohol on Silverlink on October 1st, 0 0.105. And then I received an additional show cause. This says technical violation, failure to attend individual at PATS on October 9th. Technical violation, failure to test on Silverlink October 4th. Technical violation, failure to test on Silverlink October 6th. Technical violation, failure to test on Silverlink October 7th. Technical violation, failure to test on Silverlink October 8th. Technical violation, failure to test on Silverlink October 9th. Technical violation, failure to test at Aver Health on October 5th. Technical violation, failure to test at Aver Health on October 8th. The technical violation, failure to submit compliant journal entries September 28th through October 1. Non-technical violation, tested positive for alcohol on Silverlink on October 2nd, 0 0.011. Do you understand the possible penalties of violating probation? Yes, I do. And, and do you understand uh, the alleged violations? And I do. You okay. Know, Would you like a public defender to help you? And listen, the whole thing is what I'm trying to say is I understand everything that I did before. Okay, I Mr. Fifield, you're drunk. I can tell. You're going to report to court within the uh by the end of the day today or i'm issuing a bench warrant for you okay get a ride come down here you need to be here by say four o'clock or i'll issue a bench warrant okay with the whole thing, listen the, what i'm trying to say is listen can you please listen okay to me for one second yep i'm listening and i also okay. can tell you're intoxicated yes, Mr. Yes, yes, yes i am intoxicated yep i'm not you gonna lie to you Look, I'm gonna, Mr. Fifield, you need to come down here so that we go, can address I this. Go, I want to go to rehab. Well, that would be very well, but you need to come down here, get a ride here today so that okay. we can address this and we can talk about rehab, okay? I I really need it, you know, not, but I yeah. don't want to lose, I don't want to lose okay. my sobriety court, yeah? Okay, then if, you, if you're serious about that, I need to see you today, get a ride here today. I, I, okay, I will. All right, I'll see you later today. Bye-bye. Okay. In, in your court office? Yeah, right? come to my court and we will address it. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Then there's Mr. I don't even know how effing stupid I am. Wow, this hurts my brain. I'm sure everyone has seen this clip. It has been on every channel. It's been on the news. It was on the Florida news. When you make the Florida news from out of state, that's saying something. You're not even a Florida man and you're topping the Florida man to get on the Florida news. Woohoo, buddy. It's worth watching again though because it's only like three minutes and the look on the dude's face when he realizes how bad he effed up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. priceless. Township. Assistant Public Defender Natalie Kate for Mr. Harris, who should be present via Zoom. Mr. Hello. Harris, are you driving? Um, actually, I'm pulling into my doctor's office, actually. So, so I'll just give me one second. I'm parking right now. Wait. You stationary? I'm pulling in right now at the second. Yes, I am. All right. What are we doing? Uh, Your Honor, we are respectfully requesting an adjournment in this matter, um, up possibly two to four weeks if the court would allow. Okay. So maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving and he didn't have a license. Uh, is with the charges, Your Honor? Yes. No, I'm looking at his yes. record. He doesn't have a license. He's suspended and he's just driving. That is correct, Your Honor. Um, uh. 
Hello? One minute, Mr. Harris. I don't even know why he would do that. So defendant's bond is revoked in this matter. Defendant is turning himself into the Washington County Jail by 6 p.m. today. Failure to turn himself in will result in a bench warrant with no bond. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Harris, I'll be giving you a call. Okay. How much common sense does it take to tell you to wear clothes to court? I mean, did you go to church half naked? Did you go to funerals in your bikini? Probably not. We met Mr. Little Brave in Kansas a while back, but he's still one of my favorites. He knows he's doing wrong. He knows it. But he's going to own it. Not very many people own it. Silas David Littlebrave. Right, you're going to need to unmute yourself. You're currently muted. All right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Sorry, Your Honor. Not my phone. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And I can also see you. Okay. Uh, Mr. You. Little Brave, I think it's yeah. incredibly disrespectful for you to show up for a Zoom court without a shirt and with a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize, Your Honor. Well, what made you think that was going to be proper in the first place? Well, I just got up, had a long night, and I'm trying my best to make best of what I got. And I got a lot of court, court cases up. No, I'm just trying my best to... I, mean, I, I respect your court, Your Honor, and I'm sorry. Well, surely you had a shirt to put on. I do. Then poor Judge Kirkham had to deal with this this week. Why? Why? There are other ways to express yourself. Put a sweater on, honey. Put a sweater on. One moment, please. Get the record started. Please unmute both of you. <clears throat> the 37th Circuit Court is back in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Wednesday, May 29th, 2024 at <clears throat> 11.30 a.m. And this is 2024-202-DM, Gladrian Uselton versus Kyle Uselton. Good morning to all of you. And I'm Appreciate that you're able to accommodate the court schedule and appear early. Uh, what we're going to do is take some testimony from all of you. And Ms. Uselton, uh, is Mr. Hill there? Yes. Okay. What I'll do is I'll have all three of you, Mr. Uselton, Ms. Uselton, and Mr. Hill, raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in. Then we'll proceed. Are you so raise, raise, raise your right hands. Okay, thank you. Start with you first, Ms. Ulaton. You filed a uh, motion in this matter seeking to have the child, uh, Ronan, uh, determined not to be issue of this particular marriage. Uh, just for clarification, I don't know, how do you pronounce your son's middle name? Zeta. Zeta? Zeta. Zeta, okay. I'll do it phonetically. Uh Okay, uh, go ahead, ma'am. You can uh, testify and uh, let me know what you'd like me to be aware of. Um, so I had a child with uh, Christopher Hill while still being married to Kyle Usselton, but I have filed the divorce and a motion for child born out of wedlock. Um, there has also been a request to default on that divorce. Okay. Regardless, we're only dealing with the with the issue of the paternity at this point. So, what when was the uh, date of birth of the child? February tenth of twenty twenty three. Okay, and tell me at the time that that child was conceived, approximately ten to uh, 
let's say about nine to 10 months prior to that time, uh, was in fact, uh, did you engage in any sexual relations with Mr. Uselton? No, sir. And it says in your complaint for divorce that you separated on or about August 4, 2021. Uh, did you have any sexual relations with uh, Mr. Uselton after that date? No, sir. Okay. And at the time of conception of uh, Ronan was, in fact, uh, you only engaged in sexual relations with Mr. Hill? Yes. And uh, in this uh, particular matter, has Mr. Hill uh, acknowledged that he is the father of uh, Ronan? Yes, sir. And has Mr. Hill, has he uh, taken responsibility for the minor child? Yes, sir. And does he and the child engage in a parent-child relationship? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I'll ask you, Mr. Ozaton, in this uh, complaint for divorce, she stated that the two of you had separated on her about August 4th 2021 is that accurate yes sir and had you had any uh sexual relations with the plaintiff after that date yes sir you did yes sir okay when would have been the last time that you had sex it probably would have been probably it was before rain was pre or she was pregnant with rain Okay, I need a date. I need a date. That doesn't. I don't. Happen. I don't know. I didn't keep track of it because, to me, at the time, it wasn't anything that I needed to keep track of, Your Honor. Because it I was. It, it was. Yeah, that. September, October. I mean, it was just a random occurrence. September, October of last year. Year, year before last. Sorry, twenty-two. I'm sorry. Twenty-two. Okay. It was while I was with you. Well, Ms. Uzaten, I'll ask you another question because this is contrary to your testimony. Uh, did you, in fact, engage in sexual relations with Ms. Uzaten in September or October of 2022? No, sir. Oh. Okay. And ma'am, when you uh, gave birth to Ronan, did you were you at term when you gave birth? I uh, know I was induced three weeks early. No, it was after Rain was born. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hill, uh, Ms. Uzelton has stated that uh, in this uh, particular matter that you had engaged in sexual relations with her at the time of conception of uh, Ronan. Is that correct? I can't hear you. Did you answer? Yeah. Mr. Hill? Yes. Yeah. You're, you're not coming through, so. All right. Okay. Is that better? Now, now you are. Okay, cool. And uh, you heard my question. In fact, had you engaged in sexual relations with Ms. Uselton at the time of... Uh, of conception yes sir okay and in this matter uh have you been in uh ronan's life since the child was born as much as i could be we have a lot of different things going on where um I guess the best way to put it is I wasn't able to be around um, due to a lot of different cases that were going on, a lot of random problems. I don't know too much about it because I was hardly involved. 
I mean, other than what was said here or there, like I wasn't um I wasn't face to face talk too much about what was actually going on, I guess. Okay, well, let me ask you this way. You understand by acknowledging that you are, in fact, the biological father of Ronan, that it carries with it certain financial responsibility and obligations. You understand that? As far as I know, yeah, if it's child. Well, it might require yeah. medical expenses, child support, things of that. Yeah, nature. yeah, I am. I have three other children that I do the same thing for. I've, I've always had a job. I've always had okay. them under my medical. Okay. Uh, well, my question I is, understand. you understand if you acknowledge the paternity of that child that you'll be accepting that responsibility? A financial standpoint, it shouldn't make a difference. If I'm the child's dad, I'm going to take care of them regardless. Okay. Like, I don't, I'm not worried about financial circumstance. I can okay. take care of that. Well, do you do you acknowledge that you're Ronan's uh, father? I mean, as far as I've always been concerned, I thought I was. Yeah, I mean, even the circumstance of this situation, you know what I mean. I, I know I only know as much as I know, as far as I'm aware of. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you, sir. That's all I have for you. Uh, what the court will do in this matter, the court will determine that the child uh, is, in fact, uh, not issue of this marriage. Uh, court notes it heard of the testimony, some of it conflicting, but in any event, even based upon the defendant's own testimony, that if he did engage in sexual relations with the plaintiff, that it would have been only five months uh, prior to the birth of the child. So it doesn't appear that he would be the uh, biological father. The court can therefore rule him out as the biological father based upon the Your testimony Honor. of Mr. Hill. What? Your Honor, do you have, can, I'm, I'd like to speak on, on what's going on because I feel like a lot of stuff is missing and not being brought up for why I'm involved in the child's life. Um, okay. The only question was, is were you engaged I've in natural relations I've, at the time of conception? I have never, ever once stated that I was Rain's biological father. Okay, I was brought a, into this. That's because, fine. So she lost custody of her son because of drugs, Your Honor. We okay. were still married. I was given custody of the child because both the father and the mother were using methamphetamines. DHS and CPS brought me into this and gave me my son because we were still married. Okay, when you say your son, are we talking about... Rain, my, so not, uh, Ronan. Ronan. Yes. Okay. That is the only reason I am even involved in any of this at all, because I said yes that I would raise him as my own. Zelda or Gladrian asked me, told me that my son deserves a good father, and is the only reason I step forward. <coughs> Mr. Hill, from what I know, still uses meth. He is not supposed to be around my father by DHS authority. From the last thing I've ever heard, when anything has happened with the custody of my son, the past in December and in February, I believe, the last court hearings for Miss Usselton, I wasn't even involved. And I should have been because I have full custody of Rain. Okay, you have full custody? How, how do you I have full custody? You because do. Because DHS. Okay, well, DHS. They, can't, they can't grant you custody. They can grant you possession of the child, but they cannot grant you custody. So, what has happened between then and now to where I haven't been informed of anything court related to my son. He has my last name. He was given to me under the supervision of DHS. Okay, sir. Let me ask you this and we can cut this short. Are you seeking to make a custody, uh, again, determination on your son that he should be in your custody? Yes. Okay. Well, then that will be beyond the scope of this particular hearing. We're going to need to have a separate hearing as it relates to uh, best interest factors, which is much more lengthy. So, uh, and the court is not uh, capable at this point of making a determination that uh, Mr. Hill is the child because he said he always thought he was, but that's not dispositive. So, what the court will do is the court will set a separate hearing and then we can uh, address 
all of the issues as it relates to the best interest of the child test. Can I address one more thing, Your Honor? Nope. We're going to have a separate hearing. No, we're going to have a separate hearing. You can address anything you want at the separate hearing. I want to know where my son is now. Okay. I haven't seen him in over a month, Your Honor. Okay. Then what you need to do in the divorce case, this case, you need to file a motion for custody, parenting time, whatever. Shouldn't have to. Okay. 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 We'll do that and uh, we'll give you, uh, we'll be in contact with you and set up a hearing date in which we can uh, make that uh, determination. But you're going to have to establish that it is in the child's best interest that the child remain in your care and custody. Okay. I, you, you can file the motion before that. We can address it before that hearing, but that will be the parameters of that particular hearing. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. We'll be in touch with you and set up a hearing then. Thank you. Okay. Your excuse. Have a good day. She actually reminded me of one of my very first videos that I did. It was um, Playboy Bunny Karen. And it was one of the first times I used the term Karen. And I hated it then and I hate it now. To which you're saying to yourself, well, then why do you use it? I know. I'm a hypocrite. To be honest, because, it, because I need to pay my bills. I need the lights on. This takes a lot of electricity to run this operation here. And YouTube's algorithm loves the word Karen. I actually did a test one time and I put up a video with the word Karen in the title. And I put up the same video with Crazy Lady in the title. And the one with the word Karen got more than five times more views than the other one. Why? Hell if I know. But it's how it worked. People have made that a thing. And even if you disagree with it, in order to keep up with what is trending, that's what you have to do. Otherwise, your videos get buried. You have to use keywords. You have to use sensationalized titles and it's black but that's a stream for another day let's watch playboy bunny karen not karen crazy lady be entitled this was a good one all right uh so you filed a petition uh for an application to have this uh, conviction set aside for breaking and entering uh, with intent and uh would you raise your right hand please do you solemnly swear, oath, or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you're asking this court to set aside a felony conviction for breaking and entering. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The date of your conviction was October 23rd, 2006. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, that you're only asking the court to set aside this one felony conviction. Is that right? Yes, sir. Is it true that at least five years have passed since the sentence was imposed or you're just, you were discharged from imprisonment or discharged from probation or parole for the conviction? Yes, sir. Have you been convicted of any uh, offense since then? No, sir. We filed a previous application to set aside this conviction. Yes, sir. You've tried to get this set aside before? No, sir. Okay. And you've got another application pending on a unlawful use of a license plate. Is that correct? Uh, no, that was already taken care of and cleared. That was granted? Yes, sir. Have you been convicted of more than three felonies? No, sir. Have you had any uh, assaultive crimes set aside during your lifetime? No, sir. You currently have pending uh, criminal charges? No, sir. Did you give the prosecuting attorney and the attorney general an opportunity to uh, respond to this uh, by sending them a 
A copy of your petition? Yes, sir. Now is your opportunity to uh, tell me how your uh, circumstances between the date of this conviction and today would warrant setting aside this conviction and why it would be consistent with the public welfare for you to have this conviction set aside? Well, sir, I have a child who has autism. Um, and I'm just trying to set good examples for him. And I haven't been in trouble at all since any of this had happened. And honestly, I shouldn't have gotten in trouble, but because I was with the people who actually did it and they got off, the judge had said because I was in college and, you know, being on the right path that I should have known better to hang out with them. Even though I didn't do the crime, it's because I was hanging out with them and he wanted to make me an example. So in all honesty, I shouldn't have even got in trouble for this, but it is what it is. And I'm just trying to get it cleared off. I'm a really good person. I, I, I help my neighbors, you know, my little boy and I, we go clean up our neighborhood. Um, I volunteer. I'm I, honestly, I'm a really good person and I don't want that on my record. Cause that's not who I am and I shouldn't have to represent that way. You know, are you working? I can't work your honor. I'm disabled. What's the nature of your disability? Seizures. Any questions, Mr. Stay? What do you recall being what your involvement was in this, Ms. Jordan? I wasn't involved. That was the thing is because I was hanging out with them. I was in the car. They had said that they knew the people and stuff and that they were supposed to pick some stuff up, you know, so I didn't think of anything. And because I was in the vehicle, I got in trouble. Do you recall turning in some returnable bottles that you got from that residence? No, not me. That could I'm have been reading, my sister. I'm, Shannon. Just reading, I'm just reading what you told the police when they interviewed you about this in 2006. Basically, you went over to this abandoned trailer, stole some stuff with other people. You took some of the bottles. They took some of the stolen property. Does that sound like what happened? Oh, God, this is so long ago. I don't think so. But if that's what's written down, then I guess so. Okay. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm Mr. Robinson. I'm much to stole stuff from. She's the only one who never paid restitution. So the, the victim in this case is indicating that uh, that you never paid restitution. What? Your Honor, I it took 10 years or so for me to pay it. I'm the one who paid it all off. It took like a good, I want to say about seven years to 10 years to pay it off because only being on Social Security and Sarah Gaines, um, she was also supposed to be paying, but I'm the one who kept making my payments and I paid that all off for the both of us got paid off. How much did you pay? Um, It was pretty much up to $20 to $50 each time because of being on SSI. Court should have records of whether that payment's been made or not. Sarah Gaines was the only one who paid. No. Okay, so what happens when I make my payments is that it's under Sarah Gaines. All right, anything else that you want me to consider, Ms. Jordan? No, sir, I don't 
I don't do anything except for take care of my kid. I don't have, this is the only thing I've ever been convicted of or even done considered or considered done. I keep to myself. I take care of my little boy. Mr. Stay? Your Honor, I would, uh, I didn't know Mr. Robinson was here. I would ask if he wishes to make a statement that he may come to the court. Would you like to speak, sir? I would, actually. Go ahead. Um, why don't you come up here, speak loudly, because she's so she can hear you as well. Judge Thomas, who was the one that was uh, deciding this case, great guy. Um, I, I will tell you that he never made any of those comments to her that she should have never been convicted. Her and two other young ladies decided to break into our premises while we were in Florida. Uh, stole quite a bit of stuff from our residence because we were remodeling our house in town. We brought everything out to the farm. So they all decided to go out there while we were gone. And they took all my kids' toys. They took uh, brand new saddles. There was right around ten to uh, twelve thousand dollars that we had that was taken by these individuals. When the police were coming in on them, they took them out to two track and burned it. So the state police came back with a box of about this big with burnt items in it. The only person who ever paid anything was Sarah Gaines, and I'll tell you what, she would be the only one to ever say that needs to be uh, deleted from her record. They were like a. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde have a group where they were they were doing quite a bit of crime. So I have a real issue with this whole situation. Your Honor, if I may, I we, swear we to God. I, man, man. Right, Mr. As a citizen and a taxpayer, we never were we never were fully made whole again. So those payments need to be investigated because I'm the one that paid it off, not her. My my payments are under her because it's the same case. I'm the only one that made the payments, not her. She would do maybe ten or ten or five dollars here and there, but it was mainly me. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stay, do you take a position on this application? I guess at this point, Your Honor, I would oppose it. And generally, you need some sort of culpability. She doesn't think she's guilty of this crime. Um, and I'm not here to relitigate that, but I would oppose the application. Well, so I did my time. I did the payments. I did what I was supposed to do, and I have yep. never been in trouble ever since. Well, I think Mr. Stay's uh, objection is that you said that basically you pled guilty to something or no contest to something that you didn't do, that you weren't involved, and he has information to the contrary. And sometimes, like, to show that someone has changed their ways, that begins with acknowledgement that they did something wrong in the first place, and it doesn't sound like you're even willing to give that acknowledgement. Look, I, the thing that I'm guilty about is I should probably reported it. Yes. But I did not, I did not steal that stuff and go burn stuff up. That was my sister. That was Shannon Jordan. That was Sarah Gaines. Um, my sister's boyfriend at the time, Jason, I can't remember his last name, but, um, they're the ones that did all that crime. I'm guilty of not reporting it. But on my side is because I didn't know that it was stolen. They told me that they were going to this house to pick up some stuff. Sarah Gaines said that she knew the person and that she got permission from it, from them. If I would have known, I would never even hung out with them. I don't hang out with them. They're not people that are people I would have hung out with normally, you know. But because it's my sister, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I should have, because she was hanging out with Sarah Gaines, but I didn't. Because I never thought she would put me in a position like this. She did look at Sarah Gaines, and it does look like Chandra paid most of those fines. Thank you. 
I mean, I'm really sorry that this had happened to him. If I had more acknowledgement of what was going on, I definitely would have reported it. But because of what they had told me and informed me why we were there, I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think they would put me in this position. But, you know, I paid. I did my time. The court is going to deny your application to set aside the conviction. Oh, my God. Why? Well, it's not because you didn't pay. Our records show that uh, you did pay a restitution. We had to issue warrants for you. It took a number of years. It wasn't anything that you voluntarily what? paid. But, but at this point, the court is convinced that uh, that uh, by you, ma'am. Your Honor, I never had any warrants. Stop warrant. talking. Oh, I, I thought you wanted me to talk. I'm issuing my, ro I'm issuing my ruling. Oh, I apologize. You did pay restitution. It took a while. We had issued warrants for you to do that. Eventually, it got paid. But the you have not indicated that you've had a, a change of heart or a change of attitude towards this. Uh, you're maintaining that you were just an unwitting uh, uh, victim in this case, that you didn't uh, steal, that you didn't do the things that they were said. And uh, based upon that, I don't think that... Uh, Setting aside this conviction is consistent with the public welfare, so your application is denied. Sir, may I please today. may I please say something? No, it's all for today. Sir. That lady was a hot mess. So that's part one. I have part two coming. Just a fun little compilation for you. Something different. Let's see how it goes. Thank you all for sticking around. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I appreciate your support. As always, it means a lot. And I will see you soon.